Hi everyone, hi. Just give me a second, I'm trying to share the right screen. Hi, afternoon. Okay, I just want to double check everyone can hear me and can see my screen clearly. Sorry, I was trying to share the correct screen. Loud and clear. Hey, Richard. Hi. Hi, Elvin. Soft. Um, okay, so Richard is saying loud and clear, but Elvin is saying that my voice is a little soft. I'm just wondering for the rest of you, can you hear me loud and clear? Hi, Sunny. Hi. Hey, Gliard. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name. Okay, let me just say hi to everyone. I do still see people joining, so let's just let everyone settle in. Hi. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Charvin. Hi, Donkar. Donkor. Eliabu, Chu, Gerald, Jolie, Khalid, Mary. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, there's still more of you joining. Hi, hi, hi. First time attending. Hi. Hi, Oscar. Hi, Samin. I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Okay, uh, nice, louder now. Okay, cool. Um, I think everyone is in and has settled in. So, hey everyone, today's webinar is brought to you by Tickmill, right? We are doing a live analysis session today, our trading strategy clinic. Okay, hi. Hi, Rafael. Hi, Roberto. Okay, before we begin today's webinar, I just want to do a little reminder for you guys. Disclaimer, disclaimer, okay? You guys already know how this works. Um, whatever I share with you guys in this webinar should not be construed as trading advice. It should be taken as educational only. Everything, anything and everything I share with you guys is only educational purpose, okay? Please don't take this as a signals group or a forecasting group. We're not any of that. The whole point of this webinar brought to you by TakeMail is to help you guys improve in your trading and grow your trading account. Okay, that's the most important thing here. So if you guys do have any questions, especially regarding technical analysis, do not be shy. Ask in the chat box because again, TakeMail brought this webinar to you guys so that you can improve in trading. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce myself. We're going to do a live analysis session today. Okay, so my name is Cassandra or Cass. You can call me Cass, right? Um, I am an investment analyst and a prop trader at here at Everest Fortune Group. We're an award-winning research firm. Okay, so we are the finalists for Best Forex and Equity Research for 2019, 2020, 2021, and actually 2022. I didn't, in, I haven't updated these slides, but yes, 2022 as well. Okay, in regards to myself, in terms of trading, I do have a lot of in, experience in finance, whatnot. Um, I have quite a bit of experience in finance. I used to work in a bank. I used to... Uh, 
do investment products and whatnot. Okay, but most importantly is my experience in trading. Okay, so in trading, um, I've actually, the thing that I want to share with you guys is that I've actually passed my Forex fund and uh, FTMO six times. So for those who don't know what these are, these are prop trading tests. Okay, so for a trader to pass these prop trading tests, a trader must be at least eight to 10% profitable within the month. Okay, so I've done that six times already. I passed this set test six months. Just remember, okay, this test, I have cleared my funnel account only one. Yes. Uh, then I think you should know how hard it is to clear these tests. Okay, so these tests uh, requires you to do eight to 10 within 30 days, but you need to remember because the weekends are closed. So technically you only have 22 days. Okay, there's only 22 trading days. The weekends are closed. Uh, the markets are not open on the weekend. So I've passed that six times. I'm currently taking my seven tests now. Um, I'm on in the midst of passing. I am in my seven tests, I am about 2% in. So I need a few more percent to pass. Your account is 300k. Nope, my account is 100,000. So I have six 100,000 accounts. So I have 600,000. I'm taking another 100,000 now. So if I pass by this week, then I will have 700,000 because I'm already in phase two. Okay, so again, um, since Richard knows about these tests, I actually did a bit of research and I found out that the number of people passing this test are not a lot, okay? So like 100% of people who take this test, only 4% pass this test, okay? Only 4% of traders manage to pass this test, that is one. And only 1.5% of traders manage to make it to the payout round. So you need to first pass the test and then trade and be profitable and then you get a payout and then they do a profit split with you. So I have done that successfully many, many times. I do fall into that 1.5% of traders. So if you have any trading questions, especially technical analysis, because I specialize in technical analysis, do not be shy, ask in the chat box. I'm here to help you guys grow your trading account. Okay, I'm here to help you guys be better traders. Okay, so I hope I have your trust. <laughs> Don't be shy, ask in the chat box if you have any questions. Okay, so our entire agenda today, there was a whole list, I deleted everything. I think to sum it up, I told Yongjin to take out the funded challenge as well. Yes, I told him many times as well, but I, I don't know if he took it already or not. Um, he's a very good trader. He uses fundamental analysis. So we are different kinds of trader. I use technical analysis, he used fundamental analysis. Um, he took it early this month. Oh, I don't know how he's doing. I wonder if he passed. I mean, I'm sure he's, he's passing. He's a very good trader. Okay, so we're going to use technical analysis to find setups, okay? We're going to use technical analysis. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I usually find setups. So that's all I have for the introduction. We're going to go straight to trading view so that we can look at some setups. Okay, so I will show you guys how I usually do my live analysis session. Um, I don't see you guys very often. Like I think Richard was saying, you guys probably know Yong Jin better than like you guys know me because I don't see you guys very often. Let me share screen. Give me a sec. Share screen. Where's the share screen button? Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Everyone can see my screen. Everyone can see my trading view. Okay, thank you, Khaled. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Elvin. Thank you, Raphael. Okay, cool. Everyone can see my screen. Okay, so usually when I set up my screen, the first thing I do is click on the Y axis X axis so that we can see the screen. And the second thing I do, remove all whatever drawings here. So I go to remove drawings and indicators so that we can start with a fresh um, chart. I don't want to be um, prejudiced on whether it's going up or down. I want to always uh, start fresh. Thank you, uh, Nuku. Thank you, uh, Sylvia. Thank you, Goya. Thanks, thanks for those who are responding. Okay, so 
I'll, I'll show you guys how I usually run my live analysis session. I usually start with one commodity, one cryptocurrency, and one Forex pair, okay? So the commodity that I usually choose is XAUUSD, which is gold. This is the commodity that I use. So just with XAUUSD alone, I only, me personally, I only trade XAUUSD. I am a gold trader, okay? With XAUUSD alone, I have passed at least, uh, right now I'm in the midst of passing my fourth prop trading tab. So I only trade Goal and goal alone has helped me pass three prop trading tests and I'm on the way to passing my fourth one right now. Okay, so we will start with XAUSD because that is my specialty. So we'll do one commodity, which is XAUSD and then one cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, we can choose either Ethereum or Bitcoin. I will let you guys choose. I usually do Ethereum, but if you want Bitcoin, just let me know in the chat box. This webinar is entirely up to you guys. It's for you guys anyways. And then we're going to do one Forex pair. So Forex, I usually do one USD pair. And if we have enough time, then I do one non-USD pair. Okay? So one USD pair and one US non-USD pair. Okay, so why do I start with a USD pair? Because USD, anything to do with USD, is sometimes very fundamentally affected by news, okay? It's very amnectic news. Okay, we can do um, BTC. Richard Angelis is requesting for BTC. So we can do BTC for the cryptocurrency and for the Forex, you guys let me know in the chat box what pair you want. One USD pair and one non-USD pair. So the non-USD pair can be anything, can be AUD, CAD, EUR, CAD, EUR, AUD, whatever it is you guys want for Forex, I totally let you guys choose for Forex, okay? But for commodity, please let me do XAO USD because this is my specialty. <laughs> okay, uh, so usually, same with any charts I look at. Okay, same with any charts I look at. Okay, Richard Angel Angelis is requesting for AUD USD. So we've got our, oh, Elvin is also requesting for GBP USD. So we've got our two Forex. We'll try to do both the USD pairs and then we, if we have time, we can do one non-USD pair. Okay, so usually I will start on a daily time frame. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go quick, okay? Like I won't like slowly explain why I'm ban why I'm one by one why I'm doing certain things because then I won't be able to cover all the pairs you guys are requesting for. I'll just give you guys a brief overview of what I do, okay? So the first thing as a trader, I always ask myself, is it going up or is it going down? This is the most important question I have to ask myself. Anytime I look at any chart, it doesn't matter what chart it is. It can be XAUUSD, USD, CAD, it can be US30, SMP, cryptocurrency, whatever it is. Whenever I look at a chart, the first thing I want to ask myself is, is price going up or going down? This is so important. Why? Because your answer will determine whether you're going in for a buy or a sell. Okay, so let me ask you guys, uh, let me know in the chat box, if you see price in an uptrend, do you go in for a buy or a sell? If price is on an uptrend, do you go in for a buy or sell? Yep, that's right. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Khalid. You can, I'm not saying you cannot go in for a sell, right? I'm not saying you cannot go in for a sell. You can go in for a sell because price is always moving in a zigzag, okay? Price is always moving in like a, in a zigzag pattern. So of course you can go in for a sell, but, if you are going to the beach and you see the wave pushing you this way, you always want to follow the waves, right? Uh, thank you, King Gam Kono or Iliabu. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Okay. Um, okay. You can sell, but it's going against the wave. It's always better to depend on momentum. That's right. That's right, Bonnie. It's for best to follow momentum. So one look at XAUUSD, I can immediately see that price is going up right? I can immediately see that price is going up. We can see here that it was first going down. It was in a downtrend. Mm, why is my paintbrush white? Okay, it was initially um, in a downtrend. Okay, and then it did a breakout and now it's on an uptrend. Okay, so like I said, price is always moving in a wave. So, our drop now, we know it's going up. It looks a bit extended. Um, 
I know what you mean. It does look a bit extended to me as well. It does look a bit expensive. So depending on the uh, good, good point out, Richard. So depending on the type of technical analysis you are using, right? If, for example, if you are using Elliott Wave to, to chart this, it may look very extended. But if you are using different kind of technical analysis, it may look like there's still room. Okay, so let's, let's try to do a bit of analysis together. Okay, so first thing first, we know price is always moving in a zigzag. Price rarely moves in one straight line like that. Uh, it rarely moves. I'm not saying it doesn't. It just usually moves in a zigzag. So right now, it moved in one straight line. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for that zigzag down. We're waiting for that down, that down movement. So I'm either looking to get in. There's two things we can do here, okay? One is we can go against trend and enter for a sell, okay? That's one. Number two, we can wait for the pullback and enter for a buy, okay? I don't recognize or use that wave is an objective that does not give precise levels as it is not objective. Actually, Elliott wave is very accurate. I passed two of my tests using Elliott wave. Elliott wave is very, 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 very accurate. It's just that it requires too much time. So that's why I don't uh, share Elliott Wave on this webinars because one hour will not be enough for Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave is so accurate. You can predict as far as like 10 years from now, five years from now. Okay, so let's highlight some support and resistance. Okay, I'll be honest, I do think uh, Richard is right. I do think it's a little extended. And also because it's at a resistance, it means that there's a possibility price might turn from here, but also at the same time, price already broke the resistance. Okay, price already broke the resistance. That's why we can see a spinning bottom here. The spinning bottom is a sign of uncertainty because some traders will look at this and say like, okay, there's still some room up. And then some will look at this and say, it does look a bit extended. It's time for it to uh, turn back, right? Okay, so um, I'm a bit, I'm still a bit more biased. I'm a bit more biased on a buy, okay? Number one, why? Because it, there's a momentum, there is bullish momentum right now. Number two, because it already broke the resistance. Okay, so it's telling me that price don't doesn't really want to turn back yet. Okay, so I'm a little bit biased of a buy. The question is now, where do I get in for the buy? Okay, where do I get in for the buy? So I'm going to highlight some support resistance and this is going to be our entry, stop loss and take profit. Okay, so that's our... Support resistance, let's go down to a smaller time frame. I don't like the structure of XAO USD. Uh, I did very well last week. I did 6% uh, on XAO USD last week. But I was getting in on the buy. So I was just playing this entire wave up, right? But the question is, uh, one thing we need to consider, like what Richard is saying, is it overextended? The question is, is it overextended? If it's overextended, we can get in for a buy, but we're going to be wrong. Okay, uh, sorry, just give me a sec. Let me find new levels. Let me find some Fibonacci confluence. I'm not going to explain why I'm drawing certain things uh, because we have quite a bit of charts to cover today. Not very good. Okay, because I am afraid that it might be overextended, 
uh, they say horizontal and the same conjunction again slightly in the fundamental data. Uh, using alien wave and harmonic strange you know how goes behaving these days a recent instrument half the pair is that the US dollar where the 10 year to have dropping back in the ultimate warning inflation. Yep, I, I don't know. That's that's exactly why um me and Yongjin have totally different styles of trading. So Yongjin, uh like Richard was saying, um the other Richard, sorry, there's two Richards in today's webinar. Okay, so the other Richard was saying there's another guy called Yongjin, right? Yongjin is purely well, I think a lot of his strategy depends on fundamental analysis. I am purely technical analysis. That's why things like inflation, and I don't take all of this into consideration. I just use technical analysis, and then hopefully my technical analysis gives me uh, enough win ratio to be profitable, right? Okay, so I am biased that it is a buy. I am still biased. There is no reason for me to not think that it's a buy, especially if I'm looking at this little point of view, okay? I'm But take note, I'm only using technical analysis, okay? So the, the thing is, because price is always moving in a zigzag, I now want to wait for the next pullback zigzag. And then that's where I want to enter for my buy entry, okay? So right now, the only, the nearest place I can see that price could possibly pull back to, and then we get in for a buy here, is um here okay take note i'm only telling you the buy entry okay if you are someone who is a little brave you're feeling brave honestly if you are feeling brave you can enter for the sell and then here enter for the buy okay it's just that i personally do not recommend this because it is going against the wave again you can go against wave but take note you are going against weight, right? You are taking a bigger risk. So if you want to, to get in for the sell and then the buy, you can, right? There are times where I get in on all buy, sell, buy, sell. That's when I'm feeling very risky. I usually don't recommend it. I usually recommend waiting for the pullback, wait for confirmation and then get in for the buy, okay? So don't, uh, put this down somewhere first. We need to confirm our analysis with other things. Okay, so let's confirm it with indicators. I need indicators to tell me if this analysis is going to work out. Okay, of course, Ichimoku is going to say that it's an uptrend. So the entry that I use is 21, 5, and 3. Mm. Okay, if I'm looking at stochastic, stochastic is literally saying that it's time for a pullback. Okay, stochastic is literally saying that it's time for a pullback. Okay, so I'm thinking it is time for a pullback. Okay, so when price pulls back here, okay, when price pulls back here and just nice, it is also on this ascending trend line on the stochastics. This is your double or your triple confirmation. I see you drew as a bad event on zone XA. Yeah, I did. Okay, this is a triple or double confirmation. This is a double or triple confirmation that, yeah, uh, there's a good chance price is going to reverse from here. Okay, that is a good chance price is going to reverse from here. Let's see what RSI is saying. RSI is saying the exact same thing. RSI is saying the exact same thing as stochastics. It's time for a reversal. It's time for a pullback. Where is it going to pull back to? I hope it's going to pull back to this area and then here it's going to reverse. Okay. So your only job as a trader or like what I found as a indicate as an analyst, right? My only job as a trader is not to find 100% accurate trades because it's impossible to find 100% accurate trade. There's nobody on planet Earth that is 100% accurate. If they were, they would be the richest person on Earth right? Your only job as a trader is to find the highest probability trade, okay? May know the parameters used for R uh, 
So for our, okay, so for stochastics, I use the settings I use is 21, 5, and 3. And usually for stochastics, I would use a horizontal line or a trend line to look for where I think support and resistance is. Same for RSI. RSI, I'll be using 14 or 21. Okay, so my only job as a trader is to find high probability trades. So based on my analysis for gold, if I am looking for a buy, okay, uh, I'm going to get rid of all of this so that the screen is bigger. Okay, if I am looking for a buy, the highest probability area that I think price will reverse off will be this area, okay, what? So number one, okay, number one, give me a sec. Uh, number one, why I think price is gonna reverse here because one, there is a kind of like a support here. Do you see there's kind of like this swing high here? Okay, so, if price reaches here, there's going to be some kind of uh, resistance or support area, okay? So this is a support zone. That's why I think price is going to reverse here. Number two, this is not a very strong reason, but it is something I'm still going to consider. The 23.6% Fibonacci lines up nicely here. It's not the strongest reason to believe why price is going to reverse here, but I'm, I'm just finding as many probabilities as possible. 21.5 and 3 is more reliable than standard 14.33. Uh, yeah, uh, that is what we found actually. That's right, Richard. So based on our back testing, we find that 21.5 and 3 is a bit more accurate than using the standardized, like the generic ones. Okay, so every time frame should not equal weight more variable volumes trader each day. Hence not fed off MEs. Uh, yep, same. Okay, so... My highest, based on technical analysis, just a very rough look, the highest place that I think price is going to reverse off is 1880. I actually was looking at different, I was actually doing different kind of analysis today. Obviously, I'm only going to share the buy analysis with you guys today because the buy is the only one that goes with trend, okay? The other analysis that I have is to sell. The sell would have been from here. My sell entry was actually 1921 with my stop loss of 1930, okay, would have missed my stop loss. Session disconnected. Somebody is locked in. Okay, I don't know who is in our account. Okay, my, oh my goodness, what's going on? Okay. One, nine three zero and i'm calling for a sell to um one nine hundred okay that is one of my other analysis for today but i i don't recommend you guys getting in on that why again because it's going against trend the chances of it hitting stop loss is higher than when you are following trend okay always try your best to follow trend okay so I'm only going to share the buy for today. If you guys want to take the sell, that's entire up to you. I don't recommend it. I'm going to quickly give you a stop loss so that we can lock down this account. I, I'm not sure who is in this account. Okay. So the stop loss, I'll just put it here because it's just uh, below this swing. This kind of like this swing low area. It's not the best, honestly. Take a uh, buy entry. profit okay so this is my analysis for buy for xa usd i have more than one analysis i'm only sharing this one because i think going with trend is safer than not going with trend okay so my another uh, my other analysis is to sell totally up to you guys if you want to take that i don't recommend it of course okay um just give me a set guys just give me like one minute i'm gonna lock out of this account i don't know who is using our account and then i will lock back in in uh like I will log in with a different account. So I'm going to have to sh stop sharing screen so you guys don't see my password. <laughs> Give me a sec. Sorry about that. I did not see that coming. I did not expect anyone to be using our account. Okay, um, share screen. 
you guys can see my screen, right? Okay, cool. So that's XAO USD. We've got half an hour left, half an hour left. Um, I'll try to cover as many as I can, as many charts as I can. Okay, let me read some of the questions. Is okay and high enough, good place to buy orders. For other technical signs, no momentum right now. Yeah, that's right, Richard. It's good to combine other technical analysis. Stop loss maybe went there below. I wouldn't say you uh, Thank you so much. Thank you, Aura. Yeah, uh, you can also do the sell if you want. I mean, I I was um like I said, I'm only encouraging you to buy for XA USD because we want to be following trend, right? You can go in for the sell as well. Um, you can if you want. Technically, you're kind of like playing the pullback. If you get in for the sell, you're kind of technically playing the pullback, right? But again, it's going against trend. So if you want to entirely on your own risk. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So we've got a lot of requests on BTC USD. Let's do BTC USD. I haven't traded BTC USD in a long time. I am actually an Ethereum trader. Uh, I don't trade actually, I buy and hold. Okay, what do I see with BTC? Let's start with the daily. Honestly, the only thing I see with BTC, oh, okay, the only thing I see with BTC is that. Let me try to find something. Oh my goodness, really? Somebody else is using my phone. Okay, guys. Uh, give me one minute. I'm so sorry. I really do not know who is using our accounts. This is a totally different account and I'm still being locked out. I'm going to use my own personal account. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use my own personal account. If someone still logs into my personal account, that means I'm being hacked. Okay, share screen. Okay, I hope you guys can. Yes, I do use Fibonacci to uh, extension very often. Uh, yeah, not sell at 1880. I mean, buy at 1880. What do you think gold is going to go for the entire week? Let's, let's quickly look at that. Don't worry. Uh, if you guys are thinking, I actually can do analysis very quickly. For the entire week, I think there's going to be a pullback and then a continuation of the uptrend. But it, it looks like it's time for a pullback because it's very unnatural for price to move in one straight direction. You know what I mean? See, like it moved in that one straight direction and it's time for a pullback. So in this case, it didn't pull back and continue. In this case, it pulled back and went the other direction. Okay, so if this pulls back, I hope it continues in an uptrend. If it doesn't, means it's going to continue. It's going to go back down already. Okay, so definitely a pullback first and then later on, uh, goal will decide. Do you cross position before major news like CPA? Uh, yeah, on days that there are major news, I don't even trade. It's not worth it to me because I'm not a fundamental trader. So I don't trade on days that there are uh, huge news. Uh, you will be surprised, even though I don't trade on all the news days, I actually think I still make quite a decent profit from trading, right? What is my risk? My risk is always 1%. I never risk more than 1%, but my risk to reward is always one to 2.5 and above. That means if I have a $100,000 account, I risk $1,000 and my, my take profit is $2,000, $2,500 and above. Okay, that means I need to lose two and a half times to cancel out one, one win. 
Okay, so the reason why I don't need to rest a lot and why in one week it's so easy for me, like there are weeks where I do 8%, right? It's because of my risk to reward. I do very, very big risk to reward. There are a lot of times, there's even a time when I did one to nine. That means I was risking $1,000 to make $9,000. Sometimes when I see the risk to reward is not good, I totally just skip the trade and I don't trade at all. Like there's no reason for you to force a trade you know what i mean there's this in trading there's no there's no fomo okay so don't chase a trade there's no point chasing a trade because if you chase a trade the chances of you losing is going to be high okay sorry i'm trying to get um i'm trying to get a direction for bitcoin the direction is not very clear for me i mean clearly here was a downtrend but looks like here is it still a downtrend Are you still going on a downtrend? Okay, the trend is not very clear to me. Never mind. I'm just going to highlight some support resistance. Give me a sec, guys. Okay, if I have to call a very vague trade, like I just need to call a one look and I need to call something for BTC USD, honestly, I'll call for a sell. I'll just call for a sell to this area here. Okay, why? Because, I mean, this is just a very, like, one look kind of analysis, okay? I'm, that means my confidence level is not that high. Okay, let me try to see if I can back, back up why I think this is a sell. Oh, my goodness. Okay, give me a sec. Let me do some. Um, trying to find reason for this to be a sell. Okay, I'm, I'm getting more and more confident with this sell. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let me see if I can get anything from here. One, two, and three. Okay, guys, I'm very, not very, and there's a strong chance price is going to react off here. Okay, there's a good chance price is going to react off here and you can get in from this cell. Okay, why? Okay, so can you use the 30 minutes time frame for the next application? Yep, I can. I usually use bigger time frames. I think there's a sell, but wait for confirmation. Yep, uh, good. That's right, Hassan. Where from? Uh, I'm actually, well, I'm based in Singapore, but I'm actually Malaysian. Okay. Okay. So why I think it's a sell. Okay, guys. Okay. I'm going to have to show you an, anal an analogy so that you can better understand me, but especially for those who are here for the first time, for the new attendees. Okay. So this, is, this guy's name is Bob. Okay. His name is Bob. Oh, sorry. I drew Bob's legs away. Okay, he's walking to the right. He's walking to the right. He reaches the door. Okay, if the door is unlocked, okay, if the door is unlocked, this door is made out of very light wood, blah, 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 um, what not and what not, okay, Bob will open this door and he will enter into the next room with no problem. Okay, he'll enter into this next room with no problem. Okay, but in the event Bob gets here, this door is locked. Behind the door, there are boxes. They are very, very heavy boxes. Okay, when Bob gets here, he will have no choice but to turn back. Okay, so similarly with the charts and price, okay, we're going to pretend support and resistance is your door. Okay, the strength of your support and resistance is determined by Fibonacci levels, indicators, and technical analysis, okay, that lines up in this level, okay? So right now, price is at the door. Is price going to reverse here, or is price going to open this door and move on up, okay? That is the question. Every time I identify support and resistance, that is the easiest question do I have to ask myself. Is price going to reverse here, or is price going to go up? If it reverses here, it means I'm going for a sell. If it 
breaks out from here means I go in for a buy. That's it. That it's as simple as that, honestly. Okay, there's there's nothing about trading that you need to complicate. Okay, so price is at a door right now. It's clearly at a door. Right now, this door has a 78.6 Fibonacci expansion. It has a 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. It has a 38.2 Fibonacci retracement. As a trader, when I see that there are so many Fibonacci levels lining up in the same area or the same zone, it makes me feel that our door, behind our door, there's a lot of heavy boxes. And therefore, it's going to be I won't say it's going to be, it's impossible to open this door, but I'm just saying that it's going to be hard for price to open this door. What is your capital? My capital is 700,000, uh, sorry, 600,000 US dollars. Okay. It's going to be hard for Bob to open the door and therefore it's going to be hard for price to open. There's going to be hard for price to break this area and therefore it would need to reverse. Okay, and when price reverse, that's where as a trader, I will get in for a sell. Okay, everyone good? Is my analogy clear? I'm sorry, this is the only analogy I can think of. Is my like, is my example clear enough? Like why I think it's a sell from here? Because number one, there's a door here. Number two, I feel like there are three boxes, three very heavy boxes behind the door and therefore price is our Bob is going to have a hard time pushing the door open and will have no choice but to turn back, okay? That's exactly why um, I will consider a sell from here, okay? I will consider a sell from here, okay? I'm not saying that it's in price cannot break through here. If the upwards momentum is so strong, if Bob is someone who has a lot of muscles, okay? Bob goes to the gym a lot. He will go to this area and he will break the door open, no problem. He will push all the boxes behind, no problem, because he's super strong. But let's say Bob is someone who is super weak, he's super scrawny, he's super tiny. He's going to have a hard time breaking the door. Similarly, if price, the momentum for price, if the volume and the momentum for this upwards momentum is not strong enough, then price is going to have a hard time breaking it and therefore would need to turn back and when it turns back, I, as a trader, I'm going to get in here for a sell. I'm going to get in here for a sell. My take profit, I, I need to consider the take profit in a while again. But the most important thing is I know I'm going in for a sell. Number one in trading for me is to identify whether I'm going in for a buy or sell. So BTC, USD, I have identified when price comes to 21600 area or 21 this area, this box area here, okay, which is which is 21600 to 22000. This is the area I am going to consider getting in for a sell. Do you use daily time frame to decide the direction or also files? Yep. Yeah. So I usually use daily to first decide my directional bias, and then I will go to four hours to kind of refine my entry. That means on the four hours, I'll find the closest possible entry that I can find. Um, in this case, if I'm looking at the four hours, I think the best entry for BTC USD would actually be here. Sorry. Would actually be here in this area. Okay, so if price gets anywhere close to 21500 area, I'm going to enter for a sell. Where do I sell it to? Okay, now that we're on a four hours time frame, you can use this super long one. If you are a swing trader, you can consider this super long one, okay? But I am a day trader, so I don't usually, my take profit you don't isn't usually so far away, okay? Um, my take profit usually I'll put to the closest swing high or the closest swing low. In this case, the closest swing low or the closest key level that I see is here. So this will be my take profit. Okay, this will be my take profit. This will be my entry area. Okay, this will be my entry area. Why is it not turning? Why is it not changing? It should change to take profit. Okay, never mind. This is my take profit. This is my entry area, okay? This is not the exact number for the entry, but this 
this whole area here is the entry. Okay, my stop loss, I'm just going to put it right above this entire analysis here. So this is going to be my stop loss. I'm going to put an arrow so that I my, it's very clear. I'm going to get rid of all the noise. I'm going to get rid of all this. This is very noisy. I'm going to change this to blue so that it's like, when I look at my charts, I want to be like, it needs to be very clear and concise to me, right? It has to be very clear to me. So anytime I lose, I associate the color red with a loss. Okay, so I change stop loss to red. Okay, so this is what my analysis will look like. Okay, now I'm done doing my analysis. I'm going to combine this with indicators to see if the indicators agree with my analysis. Look, I can find analysis, right? But if, if I pull out the indicators and the indicators tell me a different story, I immediately scrape the idea. I immediately do not enter the trade. There is no point forcing trades, okay? There is no point forcing trades. Yeah, con there is consciousness of where it is right now. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out the, my three favorite indicators, which is stochastic RSI and Ichimoku. Okay, so Ichimoku doesn't really agree with our analysis. Why? Because based on Ichimoku, it is on an uptrend. But technically, if we think about it, um, even if price pulls back, oh my goodness, what is going on? No, no. Uh, okay, I accidentally click on some. Do you want to exit this mode? Yes. Okay. Even if price pulls back to this area, it kind technically would still respect the Ichimoku club. So I would say Ichimoku is not agreeing with this sell, but it is technically not going against Ichimoku either way. Okay, let's see what Stochastics is saying. And let's see what RSI is saying. Um, Honestly, okay, Stochastics is saying that it's time for a pullback. It's time for a reversal. It's already at the overbought area. It's time to, for a pullback. Around this area, it's time for price to pull back, right? Okay, so Stochastics agreeing. RSI, okay, if I'm really being very honest, I feel like RSI is telling us that it's an uptrend and yeah it's going up, price is going up, okay? So RSI is not really agreeing with us. Stochastic is agreeing with us. Ichimoku is not really going with us, okay? So now that I see that, I immediately feel, let's say I was 90% confident of this trade. Now that I look at the indicators and the indicators are kind of like not really supporting my analysis, it makes me feel like, okay, I'm only 65% confident about this trade. So then this is up to you. Do you want to take a 65% probability trade? That's totally, there's a bearish divergence. Oh, I did not see that. Let me see that. Is that RSI? I don't, I guess that it's kind of a bearish divergence, right? There would be oh, kind of like this breakout here, which is a sign of bearishness. Okay, not very clear yet. Hi, uh, you can get the recording straight from Tickmill. Okay, so now that I, I feel like, mm, like I'm not very confident with this trade, like I this analysis, do I still go in? So you have two options now. Number one, you totally don't get into this trade. If you are not confident with the trade, number one, do not get into the trade if you are not confident. Number two, you can still get in, go in at a smaller lot size. You can go in at a smaller lot size. Okay, sorry guys, I'm not really answering your questions. I do see a lot of questions coming in, but um, um, I have 10 more minutes to go through one more chart, okay? So do not get in or get in at a very small lot size. So in this case, I think I have, I think 65% chance that uh, Bitcoin is going to do a pullback. I'm not like very, very confident, but I think there's a, there's a, there's a, 
good probability that will okay this trade is a kind of one to two trade okay this is kind of like a one two almost sorry let me see a one to two trade meaning if you have a hundred thousand dollars account okay you are risking one thousand dollars to make two thousand dollars okay it's kind of like a one to two trades honestly when i look at this i just feel like mm, i would much prefer a higher trade so usually my stop loss will be a bit tighter because the tighter your stop loss is the higher your risk to reward will be then that immediately brings your trade to one to 2.5 okay so do you want to take this trade? It's a 65% trade. That's entirely up to you. I personally will not take this trade because I am not, I don't trade Bitcoin. Okay. But let's say this was gold and it was 65%. I would take it. If it was gold, I would take it because uh, like that's good enough for me. What? Okay. So stochastics, like I was saying, is 21, 5, and 3. And RSI is 14 and 21. Okay, I've got 10 more minutes. I'm going to quickly do one uh, Forex. Let me scroll back. Someone was saying something about Forex. I think Richard was requesting something for Forex. Okay, GBP USD. Oh, it's not. It's Iliabu. Okay, GBP USD. I'm going to do a quick one, okay? Then I'm going to read some of your questions. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like it when structure is not clear, okay? There's two ways to look at this, okay? There is two ways to look at this. Number one, I see an uptrend, okay? Number one, I see an uptrend. Number two, see, it's making higher highs, higher lows, okay? This is still an uptrend, okay? Number two, kind of makes me feel like it wants to do a downtrend now. Okay, although it's not really that complete yet. If it turns here, it makes me feel like it wants to do downtrend. I feel like this area here is starting to give you a little bit of confusion or a little bit of um, possible trend reversal. Okay, let's hope it's not a trend reversal. Let's hope it's just a pullback. Okay, so uh, whenever you do analysis, you need to decide how many indicators you use usually. I usually use three indicators. I usually use three indicators. Um, sorry if I'm not really, there are a lot of questions up there I haven't really answered. Let me quickly do this analysis and then I will try to answer some of your questions. Okay, let me try. Vancouver channel. Price is kind of moving in a really big channel. Okay, there you go. On the daily time frame, price is moving in an uptrend in this area here. Okay, price is moving in an uptrend. Okay, so we're going to be biased that price is an uptrend. Okay, uh, that means we want to get in for a buy. We're gonna look for support resistance. This is a very good support area. This is a very good support area. Okay, just a very quick analysis. Uh, quick analysis means that it's not 100% accurate, okay? It's not a very, means it's not very high probability. Just means like, it's just a very quick overview. Sorry, this is resistant. Okay, if I had to decide where I think GBP US is going, I think it's gonna pull back and I think it's gonna come back here. Okay. That's where I think GBP is going because it needs to move in a zigzag, right? So it's going to do this zigzag. Okay, that's where I think GBP USD is going. It's going to do like a little pullback and then here. Okay, if it doesn't pull back to there, I think it at least will pull back to here. Okay, but um, let me see, where's the most highest probability of pullback? Okay, 
Okay. Okay, no. Nope. Not, not saying a lot. There's not a lot of Fibonacci levels. The only level I can consider is this first support area. Okay, if price pulls back to here, this is the only area I'll consider getting in for a buy. If it doesn't pull back to there, then just miss the trade. Okay, just skip the trade. Don't, you don't have to force it. Problem with GBP now is that confusing. Fundamentals for the certain group policy, AUD, another pair that would have been much better. Oh. Yeah, okay. Don't really have time to do AUD, USD. So I'm just going to quickly do, I'm just going to quickly do this. Okay, this is just a very rough analysis, okay? It's just a very rough analysis. That means that I'm not very, I don't think for sure that it's going to go up. I think there is a chance it's going to go up, but like how confident am I? If I have to flip a coin, if I have to flip a coin, I think price is going to pull back here and then bounce from there. That's why I don't, okay, for my own personal trading, I don't usually look at so many charts. Like I say, I'm only a XAUUSD trader. Why? Because one chart alone is enough to make you a lot of profits. And one chart alone is enough, you know, to make a really good analysis. Mm, okay, if I, I don't think this is a high probability trade, I'm just giving a very rough analysis that I think price is going to pull back here. And then from here, it's going to bounce back up here. Okay, that's all I have for GP USD. Uh, how confident am I with this? It's a really flip a coin thing. So that means I'm 50 50%. Or maybe 60% confident with this analysis. Whenever my probability of analysis is so low, I usually skip it. Okay, I usually skip it. Okay, let me try to answer some of your questions because I did say to ask questions. Please, DA, you are. I'm so sorry, Mary. We've run we have run out of time. <laughs> and let me scroll. I'm sorry, there was a lot of questions that I missed because I was trying to do analysis. Okay. Um Thank you, Aurora. Do you ever TP place? Do you ever use Fibonacci extension as a probable TP place? Yes, I do use uh, Fibonacci Fibonacci to find probable TP when I am using um, Elliott wave to trade. Okay, so in this case today we did not use Elliott wave. Today we use like traditional TA. We use support resistance. We use trend line. We use um. Fibonacci levels and we add in a bit of indicator. So this is a different style of technical analysis, but when I'm using um, Elliott Wave, which is this, I love Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave is because price is always moving in a wave, right? So you can kind of predict one, two, three, four, five. You can kind of predict where the pullbacks are going to be using Elliott Wave. Okay, so that's when I use Fibonacci to find my TP. Go entire week. I've already answered that. The position before major CPI. I do not trade when there's news. So Russia continue upgrading its new stocks. Um, yep. I think there's a possibility for gold to go up as well. Good one, Richard. What what is your risk to reward? I always try to do one to two point five. Okay, there are times I try my best to do one to two point five, but there are times I do do one to two as well. One to two is like the minimal, minimal I will do. That means I risk $1,000 to make $2,000. Okay, that's the minimum I will go. If if I see a one-to-one -one trade, I don't even take it. I just look at it. I'm just like, oh, it's not even worth. It's not even worth the risk. This will do to sell. Uh, I don't agree with. Well, you start this. I started as a swing trader and then I slowly moved into day trading. I have never become a scalper before. A scalper, I think, in my opinion, is someone who goes to 15 minutes, five minutes, three minutes. I've never been a scalper. I've always been a day trader, at least. So day trader, I look at daily, four hours, sometimes one hour, but usually daily and four hours is good enough for me. No QE and BTC, the major resistance. 
written in a big scale, then hello, BCC will be heading in the range. Oh, I think so. Uh, yeah, I do think BTC looks like in the cell as well, but yes, wait for the confirmation. I don't think BTC will fall be below recent lows as well. Okay, give me a sec. I don't think BTC will make a new low. Okay, but I mean, it's too soon to say, but just based on my I do think there's going to be a little pullback. A little pullback is going to happen, but not, it's not a trend reversal. Okay, uh, we already did XAO USD Osman. So XAO USD, I actually have two analysis. One analysis is a sell, which I don't want to share with you guys because it's going against trend. The other analysis is a buy. So a buy from, I can't remember where is my price. I think it was somewhere around here, 1885, right? Sorry, uh, I think got deleted. I think you can replay this video after this to see what the levels are. Plans rescue central bank. We do a time frame in this direction. Also, pause. I usually use daily to look for direction, then four hours to refine my entry. Then, if I cannot find a refined entry in the four hours, I go down to the one hour to find an even refined entry. So sometimes you see the opportunity on daily, but you want to go to the smaller time frame to find the best possible entry. Because look. I can look at XAO USD and I can say, oh, XAO USD is a buy, right? But where is the buy from? Is it from 1890? Is it from 1880? Is it from 1870? Where do I get in for the buy? That's why you go down to the smaller time frame so that you can find, you can refine or forecast a better entry. Do you wait for rejection candle to take trade? Okay, uh, that's a very good question, Sunny. Okay, so usually, uh, we get soft candlesticks. Okay, usually, yeah, I cannot teach you this today because we're on, we've run out of time. Okay, so usually, when I do an analysis, I, I find my entry stop loss and take profit. When price gets to my entry, I will usually look for a reversal pattern candlesticks as a confirmation. And then when I see the reversal pattern candlesticks, then only I enter, okay? Uh, this is a back price. Sorry, I don't usually do this. This is just best practice, okay? If you are someone who can sit in front of your computer all day and wait for the confirmation, yes, I really recommend that you sit and wait for confirmation. If you're someone like me, I actually have, <laughs> I actually have a business running. So I after this, I need to go to my own shop. I need to go attend to my own business. I don't really have time to sit in front of a computer all day and just trade and trade and trade. I don't usually wait for the reversal pattern candlesticks. But the best practice, if you can, if you free and if you are if you have the time, do wait for the reversal pattern candlesticks before you enter. So yes, good question, Tani. Would be the higher in area, area of congestion. Uh, I think you mean area of confluence. So area of congestion, I think the same meaning of area of um, yeah, confluence, that's where you enter for your take prop, uh, your entry. Hi, please send me a recording. You can get the recording from TickMail. Already answered this pullback. Never had to make money soon. Sorry, uh, Richard, we don't really have time today uh, to do one more analysis. So usually I will do three analysis. Only if we have time, then I will do the fourth one. Is there any way to get in touch with you personally? Mm. Yes, there is. You can look for me on Instagram, I guess. Okay, so my Instagram is just go on Instagram, add me, I'll, I'll add you back, and then you can chat with me. Oh, wait, maybe even, no, no, don't do Telegram because I don't really reply to Telegram. I don't even remember my Instagram name. Hold on. Okay, this is my Instagram. I don't really talk about trading there. 
I'm rarely on Instagram, but that's the one way you can contact me. Okay, you can contact me there, drop me a message, I'll reply. Wave two and four retreats, what fit levels? Wave two and four retrace to what fit level? So wave, this is Elliot wave, that's a, well, that's a totally big topic. Oh, okay, uh, yes, you can also email me. Here, this is my email. Okay, if you guys need to contact me. What is the minimal capital to do day trading? There is no minimal capital. You can go $100 if you want. The point is risk to reward. I know a person who turned $100 into $4,000. You don't need a big capital. You And then from that $4,000, you can turn it to $10,000. And that $10,000 can turn it to $100,000. Okay, so it's not how much capital you have. It's how good you are in trading. If you're good in trading, I can give you a $1,000, you can turn it into a million dollars. But if you're not good in trading, I can give you $1 million. You're going to turn that $1 million into zero. Okay, so it is your skill that is important. It's not your trading size. Although I do think a bigger trading account will help you grow faster, but not necessarily. So wave two, oh, second wave, wave four. Uh, this is a lot to do with, your question has a lot to do with Elliott Wave. You just have to type Elliott Wave rules on Google. There's a lot of rules. Ask customers to send funds to their account using take mail clients and research a particular cost on Telegram. Not that I know of. So Khadija is asking, does take mail ask customers to send funds to their account due, using take mail clients and reception for a particular cost on Telegram? Uh, this is not something I'm not, I'm a victim and I lost one. I think you should let take mail know. Uh, Khadija, I think you should let take mail know. I think you should email take mail and let them know what happened. I don't, I'm not sure because uh, we are just, uh, so usually when we do this webinars for you guys, we are just invited by take mail to do this webinars. So you guys, I'm not really sure about the back end things. You can please email take mail and let them know. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mara. I, Karam, I have no, uh, Elliot Wave is super, super intrigued intricate it's super hard um there's no way i can teach you elliot wave in one hour it's a super super hard thing but yes go read up on it it's a good one okay so thank you guys thanks for staying until this long um ichimoku that's a topic for a different day as well we have a topic for ichimoku on a different day okay so guys um, thanks for attending our webinar. I will catch you guys again next time. So sorry, we don't really have time. We're already 10 minutes uh, after this webinar because, so the thing is, this webinars are only one. Uh, thank you, Ibu. Oh, okay. I'm assuming Elvin is Indonesian. If, oh, I actually do Bahasa Indonesia webinars as well. Okay, um, so... The thing about this webinar is that it's only one hour long. So even if we go beyond one hour, they're going to cut me off soon. They're going to cut me off soon. Okay, so thanks for joining, guys. I will see you guys again next time. Take care. I hope your trading account grows. I hope you are profitable in trading. I hope you guys make lots of profit. Okay, bye, guys. Bye, thanks.